Hey guys, and welcome to Rotting Flesh. That's right, they made a sequel to Necromantic. Why? I have no idea other than why not. People that have been watching my channel for a while probably know that I reviewed Necromantic 1 like six years ago before I re-reviewed it like a couple weeks ago. People might wonder why I decided to re-review it being how it was actually one of my top watched videos. It was probably one of the most watched videos because my friend Stephanie made an appearance in the video which probably made it more tolerable. The reason I re-reviewed it is because I had a feeling that the movie should be taken a little more seriously and I'm better at editing now. Which takes us to Necromantic 2, which I did review before, but it got taken off YouTube due to lewd content. I think the only other vid I got in any trouble for was my uh, review of Silent Night, Deadly Night because of copyright issues. Necromantic 2 was made in 1991, directed by George Buttgrease. Anyway, George greased up his butt. Again, for another fun exploration into the wonderful world of necrophilia. We open to the closing scene of part one. I again will not ruin how it ended, but I must tell you that Rob dies at the end, otherwise this movie won't seem like a continuation, which it is. We meet Monica, a necrophile who digs up Rob the necrophile. And well, they stay true to the first movie. And I love the scene where she digs up the body. She has beautiful legs, and it makes the scene, like, kind of beautiful. Not to sound totally fucked in the tooth there, bud. I think she tries to fall in love with living men, but she finds it easier to fall in love with a corpse because it doesn't talk or some shit. Rob's a fresher corpse than the last one. I hope that wasn't appropriate. I gotta say the necromantic films are awesome. Not only does it tackle a fucked up subject, but it also always has beautiful women. They fuck corpses, but if they didn't, they'd be pretty hot. She tries fucking Rob's dead body, but ends up puking. Probably because it's squishy and smells like farts. Rob's ex Betty shows up at his grave to find out that he was already stolen. She looks bummed out. We have a tedious scene where Monica cleans off Rob's goo that he produces daily because, you know, he's a dead guy. Maybe now he won't smell so much like farts. She also puts flowers around him to give him the stench of a girl fart. Basically, guys, she does a lot of strange things with the corpse. That's the movie. So once again, guys, if I give it all away, there won't be any reason to watch it. The direction for the most part was spot on here. Sets were good and lighting was fantastic. It had a slightly more elegant look than the first film, but it kept that gritty quality because of the lovely 16mm film that it was filmed on. I fucked up in the first review, by the way, I said 8mm. My bad. I'm not gonna lie, I was kinda drunk that day. The writing was probably a bit better than the first movie, but the story didn't appeal to me as much. And it might be just because our... I'll call her anti-hero is a woman instead of a man. I think the story had more to work with still though in Necromantic 2. The acting was well done, it was as good as the first movie. The characters were interesting, I think I liked Rob and Betty more than Monica though. Dialogue was very sparse. These films don't need much to get the point across. The music was pretty much the same as in the first movie, and it had even less changes. Still good music, but kind of uninspired in my opinion. The special effects were really well done in this. The corpse was a little too fresh in this one compared to the first movie, because that corpse was fucking nasty, dude. So can I recommend Necromantic 2? Yes, I can, to the same people who enjoyed Necromantic 1. I give it a 7.5 out of 10, though, because the first one was just a little bit better, in my opinion. I love the first one. All night long. The cult epics release comes with commentary, the making of Necromantic 2, which can also be seen in... Which can also be seen as part as the corpse fucking art documentary that came with Der Toad's King or Der Toad's King or whatever. There's a concert of the leading ladies band, some random video of Ed Gein's grave, a music video that George directed for the original soundtrack. Uh, this is the thing. There's the back. Uh, comes in the slipcase. Supposedly this is limited. This time to ten thousand. The first movie supposedly was. 
three thousand, I think, but that ended up being ten as well. They lied. They're not numbered either, so I don't even believe them. Uh, it comes with this penis card and a yeah that that I really don't like the fact that you got your your necromantic one and two uh, special features on Dirt to Disc King, so it's like I don't know. I just Again, I'm complaining about it. I just think it's bullshit. Like, that is bullshit. Like, why not just... I'm surprised they haven't released a straight-up DVD of corpse fucking art. It just... It's dumb. Uh, anyways, guys. Um, yeah. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you again for the next body horror movie. Bye. That Magic Production.